My name is Jonathan Silva from Pragmatic Works Training, where we do everything from live training, in person, online, on everything that deals with data, including the Microsoft's Power Platform, as we try to help you deliver and learn about all the different things that you can do to help your business grow better around your data. Today, I'm gonna to bring you a video here using Power Automate to build a flow that reads from an Excel file saved in our OneDrive to be able to iterate over a table on that file and send out an email for each and every account or invoice or whatever we have on that file on a row by row basis, send out an email to whoever we wanna have based on a condition in order to go ahead and read there and get all of our information out to the people that we most need it to be sent to. So we're gonna leverage Power Automate in the cloud. We're gonna leverage OneDrive to go ahead and have Power Automate read that Excel file, pull the selected values that we wanna have and create a notification, an email, whatever we, we need for it to be able to send out as we see fit. So we're gonna go ahead and jump over into Power Automate to start the process of building out our flow and getting everything set up in the way that we need it. All right, so here we are at Power Automate, at make.powerautomate.com. This is the new URL for Power Automate. Uh, no longer is it flow.microsoft.com, so that's one of the more recent changes here. But we're here in Power Automate. I've started a uh, manual trigger flow here. So we have an instant cloud flow all organized. And again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna read an Excel file and send an email. Now the Excel file that we're gonna read, I've created right here and saved it in my OneDrive where we're gonna go ahead and look at this table and send out emails based on some conditions from this table. So what I like to have organized is I want my flow to iterate over each row in the table here and to send out an email based upon if our invoice is greater than a specific amount. In this case, I think I'm gonna use something like you know maybe $10,000 or something, something that I can split this up pretty easily. Um, and then I wanna make sure that I'm only getting emails based on that. So in the end, I should probably only get an email for these two accounts for Wayne Enterprises and Wonka Industries. I should not get an email for the other two because we're gonna make sure the condition here is based on an account that is greater than, or an invoice that is greater than 10,000. Okay, so that's gonna be the condition that we wanna to set to make sure this is really working the way we have it. So as a long-term solution, as the end product here, even if I have uh, an Excel file here with, you know, maybe it has 10,000 rows in it itself, we're gonna only filter down to the selected values, the selected options that we want for this. Now we're gonna use a condition here to help us filter down that range, but if we wanted to make it more specific of a specific amount, we can go ahead and throw in a switch there as well. Just depends on the different type of flow that we wanna organize. So we're gonna go ahead and use this uh, Excel file right here. We're gonna pull from a OneDrive folder that I have here called Power Automate, saved in my OneDrive, okay? It's called Accounts with Power Automate. So that's where we're gonna go ahead and, and pull from there. And then we're gonna use that within our flow. So the first step that we want to take with this flow is to go ahead and we have our trigger already organized, right? We wanna go ahead and actually get those rows from that Excel file. So we're gonna add a step here, an action here, coming from Excel online. We're gonna choose our business option here. And for this one, I want to list rows present, okay? List rows present in a table, then use those rows to be able to pull from and send out specific emails for each of them, right? So based on that condition. So that's our first one. Now we're gonna go in here and as we use our list rows present in a table, I'm just gonna rename this to make sure it's exactly what we want, okay? List rows present in our account, accounts with Power Automate table, okay? So I know exactly what I'm doing later on. And now I'm gonna go ahead and point to that exact Excel file. So it's located here on my OneDrive for Business. My document library is, is OneDrive. The file path, let's go ahead and make sure I'm choosing the right folder here. That's Power Automate for me. And there is my Excel file that I'm pulling from. Okay, the table that I want, 
is I only have one table, so it's nice and easy for me. It's my accounts table. And so now if we think about how we want to organize this flow, we want to use this table and we want to pull each row on a single one by one basis. So we're going to be able to iterate over that table. So we have an action to be able to use to iterate over that table called apply to each. And we can use apply to each to separate each line item there. So when we pull from that table, we can then select each row to be able to utilize in a different email. So for our output for here, we want to pull our value from that list of items, which means the value is essentially each row that we have pulled in. So we're going to go ahead and select that as our, um, as our dynamic content here within our apply to each step. Then inside of our apply to each loop, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and create our condition. So we're going to set up our condition to make sure that we can pull from that invoice amount, which is located over here. Now, one of the things to notice when we're working with invoice amounts and we're working with currencies in this case that have a decimal, Power Automate is going to need a way to handle that decimal and convert that into a floating number. So it converts a value. So what we're going to need to use is an expression to assist us in this case. So if we come here into our uh, condition and add our, our value, we need to come into our expression here and we're going to use float. What float allows us to do again is take any of those decimal numbers. A lot of time we're working with currencies because you know it's like maybe it's 1099 or 996, right? That we have for a specific value of an item. Using float allows us to convert that value into a floating number that we can use. So now that we have our float expression inside of that float expression, we're going to go ahead and use our invoice amount. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and use our apply to each inside of it. Now, when you come into your dynamic content, unfortunately, it's not providing you that dynamic, con that actual ability to just um, use for the items we want. So we're going to have to manually type it in this time. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull from the items listed in our apply to each step. So we're going to start with our items and then we're going to say, okay, where are the items coming from? So inside of our items option here, we're going to pull from apply to each. Okay. And then from there, we always need to have our little question mark here to say, okay, which exact uh, column are we going to be pulling from? So we have our square brackets referencing our columns here and we're going to use a, a single quote here because we need that within our expression language. We are doing our invoice amount, which is the direct name of our column here that we want to pull from. So that's exactly what we're trying to get to. All right. So now we have our expression created. So we're going to have here. So again, to read this expression, we're going to use a float. And the reason why we're using a float again is because we potentially have our decimals here. So if you have any, if it's 12,000, dollars and 50 cents, right? We're going to need to be able to float that so we can use it inside of our condition. And we're going to pull directly from our apply to each step, okay? Using the items that are running through the apply to each step. And we're going to use the invoice amount as the item to run through it, okay? To search from the value in our Excel worksheet. So we're going to add that in there. And then we're going to go ahead and in our condition, I'm going to go ahead and expand it again inside our condition and say is not equal to, but we're going to do is greater than or equal to 10,000. Okay. So we have our 10,000 right there. So now we're going to say, all right, if this invoice amount is greater than or equal to 10,000, I want to have some type of notification every time I run this flow. And the notification I can create, we can choose, there's a whole variety of notifications. If this rings true, what do I want to do? In this case, I can do a quick, you know, send an email. And we can come in here and we're going to do send an email version two, Office 365 Outlook. And I'll go ahead and send this to myself just as we test here, but you could always obviously send it to whoever you'd like. And then we're going to go ahead and specify an email. Right. So maybe I want to put in some little emoji there. So we're using our windows key and full stop or our period. And maybe I'll put like a, like an alert, maybe like, Hey, 
there's your, this is time sensitive. So I can put that in there in our two line there and I can say um, important follow up action needed. And maybe in the body I can say hello and right if we were going to use some external emails we can use some of this dynamic content right we could say whatever we want to have um, hello please follow up with we could do our dynamic content here contact name from our account they let's see they have a very important account with us and we want to provide the best service to them okay something like that right so we can have that and then maybe we can just kind of keep it like that nothing too crazy here and we can go ahead and save that and let's test it so when we test this what we're looking to see is if we are able to manually trigger this flow when we're able to trigger the flow we want to read through list all the rows present in this accounts with power automate table that we've created in excel for onedrive and then iterate over each row apply to each so that's each row that we're looking at every single row in that table i want to pull back any of the accounts that have an invoice amount greater than 10,000. And we're gonna use again float in order to convert this, this value here with a decimal to a floating number. And then we're gonna go ahead and based on that condition, if that condition was true, I wanna get an email. Now the goal here is for us to be able to get two emails, one from one for Wayne Enterprises and one for Wonka Industries. The others we shouldn't be getting because they have not met that condition. So that's what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and test this. We're going to do a manual test. And here it is. And we should be good. We're going to run that flow. And here we go. Here the flow is running. We are now doing our apply to each. So it's iterating over that table, finding those up. Oh, it's run successful. And I've just gotten an email. But I can see here in our condition, we have one time our, our for the first run, the conditions expression has rang true. So we've sent that email. On the second one, it's also rang true. So we're gonna send another email. Our third, that's false. So we shouldn't get an email there. And the fourth, also false. So here, we, oh, you can see them popping up here in my emails. You can see on screen there on the very bottom, there's follow-up action needed. There's one of them. So I can select that and here's one email, okay? Please follow up with William Wonka from Wonka Industries. Have an important account. There's one. And I saw the other one pop up as well. So I'll open that one too. And there's my second one, right? We have from the exact options that we want based on the condition that we set. So that has absolutely worked the way that we want. And the big part about what we're looking here in as we work through power automate in the cloud and using our float especially this is the important part this is where a lot of us uh tend to get stuck where i have all these decimal values i'm not sure how to get these to pull properly it's just not running correctly using the float expression is really good for us to be able to convert those values into a number a float that we can use within our flow it's a really strong way to have that conversion work for us and make things nice and simple to go moving forward. Well, thanks for joining me again here today as we looked at how we can pull values from an Excel table and saved in our OneDrive and then send them in an email based on a condition using some expression language here inside of Power Automate. See everyone for our next one.